Hi, welcome back. Today we're gonna to create a free infrastructure as a service instance in the Amazon cloud. So throughout this tutorial, we'll be doing things like selecting an operating system, which will be Linux based and it will be free. We are selecting a free tier that will be free for one year. You're gonna need a credit card, but it's free. So don't forget to cancel before the one year is up if you don't want to continue. We'll be uh, creating some security keys, and those are keys so that we can log into the remote instance. We will be selecting uh, security options. Those are firewall options where we can access our, well, SSH should be enabled, but where we can access our web server on port 80 and 443. We can, of course, change that as we go along. And then we'll remotely connect to the server via SSH. So we'll be using, uh, we'll look at both the name, that's the DNS based, and we'll be looking at the IP based connections up to that system via SSH. Now, if you haven't used SSH before, you uh, will be using the keys that you create, so do not lose your keys. And this works from Mac, Linux, or Windows. Uh, if you've got, I forgot what version of Windows, whatever version of Windows supports SSH, but Mac supports it, Linux supports it, and uh, Windows 10 plus maybe that supports SSH as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna create a free account here. So click create a free account. And where it says the root user email address, we're gonna go ahead and enter our email address here. And so I'm gonna pop my email address into the window and then it's going to uh, set up an account name for the account. And this is gonna be whatever account name we want to uh, we want to establish here. And so choose a name for your account. You can uh, change this name to your account settings after you sign up. And I'm just gonna say this is uh, Amazon EC2 or we'll just say Amazon Cloud. I'm gonna choose verify my email address and it's going to send a verification code over to my email i'll need to verify that now once i verify that then we can continue on and i'm just going to type this in off screen so my code doesn't pop up even though nobody could use the code because you won't be seeing this in the amount of time that it would take before the code expired but i am going to pause this and go ahead and enter the code Okay, now it wants us to enter a root user password. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop a password in there and uh, we'll, we'll allow that to go with that password. So whatever password you wanna use, just pop a password in and we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, yeah, save that password. Right there, so I'm gonna save that password and uh, hopefully be able to use that in the future, so. Oh dear, it looks like my password might have a special character that I don't accept. Let's go ahead and put uh, another password in there. We'll simplify it a little bit. Well, no, that seems to support everything that they're asking for, so... Let's see... Alright, well, we'll create another password. Why not? And why do they do this to me? You know, it's right in the middle of a recording. Okay, simplified the password a little bit, seemed to like that, so now it's letting me in. I'm going to go ahead and choose personal, it's for my own projects. Now we have business for your work, school, or organization. This is just personal. And uh, who should contact about this account? And I'm going to go ahead and put in my name there. And my phone number, etc. So you'll have all this information put into the form. You'll need to agree to this and then continue on. Now, once you enter all of your personal information, it will be asking you for um, your credit card information there. So you will need to put in a credit or debit card number. Just watch out for that. Um, remember, we are using free tier here, but if you forget to cancel the account before a year is up, you know, when it when it actually charges you, uh, these are free for one year, then it will charge your credit card. So watch out for that. 
Okay, during the credit card sign up, you will need to verify your identity. So let's go ahead and verify your identity. You can do a text message or a voice call, but you will have to have a valid credit card. And remember, it will not charge you. Well, it might put a dollar on there and then give you a dollar refund. Um, but it will not charge you until the year is up. So watch out for that. Okay, after verification, we're now able to sign up for AWS. And so we're going to uh, look over here at I'm choosing the basic support free account. So that's the free account there. Not the uh, not anything that $29 or $100 a month. This over here recommended for new users is 2077 self service access to AWS resources for accounts and billing issues only and access to personal health dashboard and trusted advisor. Okay, sounds good. Let's go ahead and choose that basic support. We're going to choose complete sign up. Now we are choosing the free tier. Okay, congratulations. Thank you for signing up with AWS. We're activating your account should be able to take up a few minutes. You receive an email uh, when this is complete. Now that should only take a second. So, you know, you can give it about 30 seconds if you'd like, and then see if uh, and if it's all available for you. Uh, so I'm gonna give it about 30 seconds. I'm gonna choose go to AWS Management Console. We should be good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna choose go to the AWS Management Console here. Clicking through there, it's asking me to, to sign in. I'm gonna sign in with my new user account here. And so this is the root user account and my email address right there on the screen and the password, which is the simplified password. There we go. Yeah, save that. All right, great. So there we go. We are up and running now. And uh, it looks like, yeah, it looks like we're fine. It's gonna walk us through a little tutorial. So let's look at these options. So over your service menu, you can access AWS services here. There are sections for recently visited and uh, you can save your favorite services too. So next, we're over here, type slash resources, that's a forward slash, to focus search results on resources such as EC2 instances, that's Elastic Compute Cloud, that's what we're gonna be using, S3 buckets and more. Enable common notification for CloudWatch, EC2, and Health using the new quick setup feature in AWS user notifications, which is great to know if your machine is down or something's not working. Uh, you can now control your language and visual mode settings from the navigation bar. Other user level settings such as default regions are now available under user settings option in this menu. All right, so we're here, right? So we can now create our machine. We can do whatever we want to do. I'm going to show you right here over in applications, one of the things that may be the most important part for you at this point in time. I don't know where you're located and what part of the world that you're in, but what you're going to look at here is where you want your machines to be located. Do you want them to be on the East Coast or some other region out there? So watch out for that. Uh, I'm going to pop into supported regions here, see if anything comes up. Oh, it's not, it's not popping anything in for me. Uh, but right there, I used to be West Coast USA before. So I was US West, but US East is where uh, it defaulted to now, which is absolutely fine for me. But just remember this, because if you migrate machines, you need to migrate them within the data center, wherever those machines are located. So if you all of your machines are over on the East Coast, then you can just move machines around and do whatever you want to with them. But if you have some machines in the East Coast and some other machines, let's say in Tokyo, then you just can't move those over that easily. You can't drag and drop. So keep that in mind uh, when we go through and create our machine. And there is something here, Cost Explorer, that I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Cost Explorer. See see what that does and see if all that comes in okay that's a lot of feedback here it's saying there's no, nothing uh, available at this point which it shouldn't be but i am very sensitive to cost especially since i'm saying hey this is free <laughs> so let's pay attention to cost and be sure that we uh we don't incur any cost in this at all so go back here back over to applications here and uh, we've got recently visited it shows me that I'm gonna click on an EC2 instance 
if that comes up on the page. I think those are gone now because those were there in the info. So I clicked on view all services and I'm choosing EC2. So that EC2 right there. And now we've got all of this screen. So this screen right here is showing us the free tier, what we can do. Um, we have instances running right there, nothing. Elastic IPs, those are IP addresses that are assigned to your machines. Load balancers, nothing there. Snapshots, nothing. So we, don't, we haven't created anything, right? We don't have any keys or anything else. So, okay, great. Well, we can just go ahead and hit straight into, and those are the zones there. So watch out for, uh, for different zones there. But the launch instance, let's go ahead and choose that. Launch instance. And it's gonna, and this is where it's gonna set up our server name. And uh, in this case, I'm actually gonna be making this an Amazon Cloud demo. So I'm gonna just make this a demo server right there. So I'm gonna make that a demo server. Uh, down here for operating systems, we have Amazon Linux, Mac OS, Ubuntu, Windows, Red Hat, SUSE, SUSE Linux, and Debian. We're gonna be leaning towards Debian for our installs there. Um, and so that's because the uh, several reasons, but we'll be, we'll be leaning towards Debian for this installation. So let's go ahead and select Debian there. Um, we definitely will not be choosing Red Hat or the Amazon Linux. The Amazon Linux is based on Red Hat. I think I think it's a Fedora or a CentOS image, uh, which is based on Red Hat and with the recent advents from Red Hat Corporation, we'll not be selecting that. Um, Windows will not be selecting that, but we will be choosing Debian there. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose Debian. Uh, over here, the architecture, the 64-bit x86. That's what we wanna choose, the 64-bit x86 there. Uh, the free tier L eligible. We wanna be sure that we are on the free tier eligible right there. And we've got this free tier eligible for a micro instance that gives us one virtual CPU, one gig of RAM, and then let's see how much space is in there and some kind of space so we'll there you go it looks like we got uh eight gig in there with okay we can get up to 30 gig of ebs general purpose ssd so we can go up to 30 gig on that that machine and that's gonna be fine for everything we're doing so let me go back up to the top here and lost it. There we go. <laughs> Back at the top. So we've got uh, right here the the T2 dot micro. If we choose all generations there, then you might be able to see a few more uh, options here. They've got the T2 micro family. I uh, see one virtual, one gig, and then uh, one two gig. Is this one free tier eligible? Looks like it's not. So we're just gonna say like. Yeah, we're going with the T2 Micro right there. Free tier. Now for the key pair login, this is one of the things we mentioned to start out with. We'll need to generate a key pair. So we're gonna go create a new key pair. Now you can choose RSA or you can choose a ED25519 right there. I'm gonna go ahead and choose an RSA and I'm gonna do uh, Amazon EC2, just like that. That's what I'm gonna name it. And this uh, RSA, which it is demo server, but I'm just naming it, I'm an Amazon EC2. And I'll pop it out to a PEM file, which PEMs work great. So I'm gonna do, go ahead and do that. Now when I, when I select this, it is gonna, you want to store the private key in a secure location. And that would be, if you're using Linux or Mac, your home directory .ssh. So the .ssh directory inside your home directory is a great place to put that. If you're wondering how to move that for your downloads, you can just do a move from your downloads file, the Amazon EC2 PIM, and you can pop that in your home directory .ssh right there. And then if you want to go ahead and change the permissions, you can ch chmod that for a 600 on the tilde slash .ssh Amazon EC2 PIM, just like that. So those commands right there, we'll go ahead and move it to a secure location and secure it just for your user object and your group. All right, so moving right along. 
Under the network settings here, we're gonna keep everything as default as possible. And the reason we're gonna do this is because this is our first machine. So the first machine we create, we're gonna to try to make everything as boilerplate as we possibly can. That is as much with default options as we possibly can. So right here, auto assign a public IP. We have that enabled right there, the network info. Uh, that's the network info right there, the subnet info, no preference in that. Now this create a security group. We'll have to do that. And we're gonna say yes, allow HTTPS traffic from the internet and allow HTTP traffic from the internet. Now, as long as we don't have Apache installed and we're not running any web server, then you don't have to worry about it, right? So nothing right there is, is gonna get to us. But we definitely have to allow SSH traffic and you can choose where you wanna come from, but we're gonna, in this case, we're just gonna say from anywhere. Let's go on down and uh, up here. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can just go up to uh, 30 gig. I'm just gonna see if see if we can do that. What options do we have? GP3 is SSD. Okay. I'm gonna see if we can do that right there and just do the 30 gig. So selecting that, I'm gonna move on down. I did put 30 there not selecting anything else I didn't choose add new volume so I didn't select that there I'm not gonna create a new volume there so we're just gonna leave it right there at the 30 and it's a uh, root volume not encrypted moving on down uh, for here the advanced details pretty much we're not gonna select any advanced details uh, these options right here you can select later on so you can select these options at a later time so I'm not gonna select the advanced details right now so now we've got this up we've got the uh, number of instances let's see if I get this on the screen there we go we've got the free tear it says your first year includes 750 hours of t2 micro uh, right over there per month and it goes on it's one free year lots of bandwidth great so we have 30 gig there new security group and the Debian 12 is what we're running choosing launch instance. Now this is actually creating the machine for us and launching our instance. So right now this should be up and running. We can go over and click on the link right here. If you forget the link or you close the web page, you can always go back and look at your instances under EC2. So I'm gonna click on this link and now we'll see that we have demo server running with an instance ID right there, instance state running right there the instance type is t2 micro the status check is initiate initial <laughs> initializing now uh, the uh, alarm status is we don't have any alarms uh, right there and we have the public ipv4 dns which i can select that um, and we have the public id right over there so over here with this public ip we can try to visit that via via the web so if you want to just pop in over here and pop that in, you'll see it says, oh, I'm sorry, you can't get there, nothing there, right? That's because we don't have a web server running yet. So there's nothing running on that IP address at this point, except for SSH. So we need to log into our system and we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. So go ahead and bring up a terminal. And this is whichever uh, operating system you're using here. So whichever one it is, go ahead and, and pop that up. Let me see if I've got this where you can see it. Okay, close, close. Almost completely visible. Okay, now right here, I'm gonna go ahead and try to log into this IP address. So I'm gonna do SSH. We need to know what the user account is and the user accounts there are usually user-ec2 but let's check this out we'll scroll right down and we're gonna look for a username see if they gave us a username here something that we can use
I don't see one. <laughs> but it's the user dash EC2. But um, it seems like they would tell us what it is. And you know, I haven't read this version of Debian before, so maybe it's not user dash EC2. They should really let me know. Let's find out if we can uh, do a quick search for user. Well, in that case, let's go ahead and log in with what we think the username is. And it looks like it's admin. So let's go ahead and we're gonna try that. We're gonna try to do admin there. I'm gonna do the dash I here, and I'm gonna do the Amazon uh, PEP. We'll see if it'll let me do this. And there we are. So we're able to log in just like that. You can see that in the screen. I'll make it a little bit larger. Or maybe I won't. <laughs> just went right off the screen <laughs> so I'll make it a little bit larger there and try to fit that all onto the screen so that you can see it there we go and so this is our image so we can check a few things here see our, our disk space you can see that we do have a 30 gig disk so we have plenty of space available uh, that was our IP address when I, when I logged into us my IP address when I logged into it right then and uh, we have well I guess full services so do an LSB release dash a see what we got yep Debian 12 I'll see if INXI is there it's not so I'll go ahead and app get install dash y INXI oops sudo there we go. And it's like, oh, I don't know what INXI is. Well, let's go ahead and sudo dash S over, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to look at a couple of our options. So I'm going to do an app get update, and we'll see if everything's up to date here. And then I'll do an app ash search INXI just to see if it's out there. It is. So I'm going to do an app get install dash Y INXI. And there it seems to be downloading that okay and if everything works out then I can do an INXI dash F R M is taking a sweet old time all right INXI dash F we'll just do that right there and we've got some information about our machine so over here, some information we have. We have our host right there, the architecture, how many bits it is, what version of Debian we're running, uh, the Zen system that it's running. So we got, now we know that Amazon is running Zen uh, over there, 4.11.amazon, not the version there. Serial number for the machine, uh, which don't share those things with everybody. My model is uh, it's going to go down soon, so it's not that big of a risk. Um, we can see we have right there Intel Xeon E5 2676. Interesting. I wonder if that's real or emulated. So that's an interesting processor there. We have a uh, Cirrus Logic um, graphics is what's running on this machine. We uh, move it on down what we have for network right there, and that is about it. So. There you go. Now we have our machine up and running. And let's say you do something like you say, shut down dash H now, and you accidentally shut down your machine. And you're like, oh no, I just shut my machine down. That means I can't log into it because my machine's no longer there. So it just dies. Uh oh, what do I do? So let's go back over here to our instances and uh, we'll, we'll try to do this as as much as possible go to EC2 so we're right there at Amazon EC2 and then on Amazon EC2 we'll click on instances right here for running and if you go into the instances running we have nothing there so I'm gonna uncheck running and say well what do we have oh look there's one that stopped so go ahead and you can select that machine and you can right click in here so this is is clickable so you can right click in here and you can choose start instance now starting that instance doesn't take much time at all it is extremely fast so we should be able let's see 
uh, should be able to pop right into it within just a few seconds of booting that instance up. Uh, so give it about 10 seconds. I gave it about five and it's making me wait. <laughs> it's not logging in. Okay, come on, come on. It should pop right up. Oh, I didn't get a new IP. I mean, I got a new IP. Let's see if I got a new IP. I got a new IP address. Okay, I got a new IP address. You have to watch out for that. So my instance did go right online, but unfortunately it's a new IP and I need to go through and pop in my new IP address now. So there you go. All right, there, we are back. And uh, you can do an INXI just to make sure that it's your machine if you want to. And you go through and look at whatever you want. So you can pop into that machine now. We're not gonna go through and worry about the locale or anything else in this machine right now. The mission today is just to get our instance up and running. And we do have an instance up and running. For those of you who are thinking, really, I, I have to have a web server running right now just to verify that my machine is up and running, um, then there is a way we can go through and do a Python machine. So I'm going to do a sudo s, become root, and do a python3 mhp.server on port 80. Hey, you see that right there? This command that I just typed right there. I'm trying to make that as big as possible. And I'll drag that over so hopefully you can see it. Okay. And now I'm going to click over and uh, I'm going to go to that new IP address we have. And you can see, there we go. Now I've got my directory listing for that new IP address right there uh, on the machine. So that web server is now running. Now I don't want to leave it like that. So since I don't want to leave it like that, I'm going to kill that. And um, we're going to go ahead and leave that not running. So I've killed the web server. It's no longer operational. And uh, our machine only has SSH available. Go ahead, leave your machine running, leave this instance running. Remember when you shut it down, it will change the IP address, but leave this instance running and uh, over time, go ahead and check your um, your security on this machine. So let's go to var log, see what we got inside of our log. Uh, last log, journal, some other things like this. Um, what you can do is go in and you can look at what's going on in your machine in a several of these options here. So I'm just going to star there, run through that. Um, and we can look at who's logging in from where, and we can also set up a number of little monitors that will watch our machine for us. Hope this helps, and I look forward to talking to you next time when we move forward with installing web services.